Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Uh, permit me to refuse the money. Permit me to return to the matter of the Yankee merchandise. Josh, just told you, poet. We sold out our stock of shirts, our ties, our stock. You just... are the men who have a catch and have saved the Caribbean from Miami. Yes, sir. We're the men who have a catch and have sailed. That's who we are, poet. And no, you... it is a simple matter, then. Since you are these men, it is a simple matter. We will make arrangements for the removal of the merchandise. Now, look, Mr. Rene, my name. Permit me. That is my name. Thanks. It's this way, Rene. My understanding of things poetic is a little shaky these days. Mine, too. Yeah, his, too. Are you trying to be clever? Or perhaps it pleases you to tweak my passions. The merchandise. Permit me, but the merchandise. When shall we remove it from your boat? Mr. Rene, I simply have got to explain something to you. It's evident that you're mistaken. We are not mistaken. You have the merchandise. We will pay what... Rene, a fond farewell, Josh. He needs to keep his head covered from the patient's son. But, but it is a matter of... No, you cannot. The merchandise! You cannot refuse him the merchandise! You cannot refuse Josh and I walked down. I looked over my shoulder and saw Renee's face become suddenly gray, suddenly old, and then a blur fading into the crowd that swarmed the narrow street. Episodes of the dream trip, cockfight followed by a native poet making calypso on a type of merchandise that didn't exist. Poet. Also dealer in intangible, souvenir to be stored away. Anecdotes to regale the young ladies of New Kensington, Pennsylvania on our return. When the dream money ran out and the place to come back to was New Kensington, PA. But now, unguided tour of Fort Prince in a side street you never believed you'd walk. Why? Hmm? What are you thinking about? I was thinking I like it. I like what we're doing. I like where we are. Me too. Yes, sir, me too. It's all around you. It's wonderful. There's no regret, huh, Josh? You mean we gave up a nice going haberdashery business and took off? That's what I mean. I talked you into it. No regrets, huh? What do you mean? You talked me into it. This idea, this dream, if you will. I will, I will. I remember to this very minute, the night it germinated in my brain. We were sitting in the dorm of the good old University of Pittsburgh, stripped to the waist, it being a hot night prior to graduation, and a bottle of beer in the hand. And you said, Haiti, someday let's buy a boat, you said. See? You conceded it was my idea. Sure, sure it was, Josh. Then you said, Haiti. Then I said, Haiti. Why? Uh, the Citadel. What about it? Just I gotta see it, that's all. The Citadel of Henri Christophe. Ever since I was a kid, I've been reading about it and wondering... We'll see it. When? Look, something I got explained to you, kid. A couple of fellas like us, they hit a new country after an ocean voyage. You know, they need time to condition themselves, become acclimated, mingle with the group, you know, meet In some In my of... reading on the subject of young women of Haiti... Yeah. I have read that the young women of Haiti are sheltered and circumspect. And a formal introduction arranged by a mutual friend or acquaintance is the etiquette to be followed when a visiting gentleman has the wish... Show to... me where it says. Why, I was... I just want to make sure you and me... Yeah. Visiting gentleman, that's what. Le Café de Pavillon de Toulon. Now, don't change the subject, right? Just... What? Le Café de Pavillon de Toulon. Translation, Café of the Pavilions of the Small Moon. Oh, my, oh, my. Ah, you feel okay? The heat, the excitement of the new... That sign over the café there. Come on, Josh, let's go get moonstruck. I want to. (laughs) Oh, my, oh, my. Me, too. I said what I said on graduating from the University of Pittsburgh. After me, kid. 
Uh, bar- bartender. Vous plaisir, monsieur. The pleasure presents no problem, bartender. First, we want rum. Oui, monsieur. <laughs> right. Hush, kid. Let there be hush. Leave the bottle, bartender. Ah. We made it, kid. We made the dream. A toast, huh? Sure, Haiti. I love you. Yeah. Desaline, Toussaint, and the jeweled bay of Ganev. And to the jungle mysteries and the delights of them. And to the jungle mysteries and the delights of them. Hey, you turn a phrase, monsieur. Then may I propose still another toast? Be our guest. To the young lady who sits there. Where? At the tavern in shadow. And the fall of carried sunshine across her cheek. There, you see? I see. <laughs> Oh, my, oh, my. Where? Where? I don't see her. Where, Rye? Show me, too. You could look upon her with nearness? I could. I'm just a chap who could. Come, then. She has whispered it to me. Bring them to me. Bring the voyagers to me, what her whisper. Why? where? Lady whispered, Josh. And it's a call I've been waiting for. Right? Bring the bottle, Josh. I... Oh, now I see her. Oh. I'll bring the bottle. After you, monsieur. Pepe. After you, Pepe. Vivi, the voyageurs for whom you have whispered. Merci, Pepe. Seat yourself with Bibi, monsieur, for the nearness. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I'm Josh Ford from New Kensington, PA, and uh, this is my buddy, Ryan Dixon. Uh, he's from New Kensington, too. At present, sir, we're retired haberdashers. I am Bibi, and I have long for the time of our meeting. Pepe. Are we? You did a splendid job of greeting us. Top and you no longer have a need for me. Huh? <laughs> and we no longer have a need for you. Then I shall make my small departure. Uh, no hard feelings, Pepe. It's Au just a... Till another scene. Yeah, yeah, till then. You were lonesome for us, Phoebe, for both of us. The moon was full and it grew slender. For the passage of this time, I've longed for you. Oh, you don't even know us, Phoebe. We live thousands of miles apart in different worlds. How could you... Gosh... You ever been in New Kensington, Bibi? Uh, University of Pittsburgh? Have Josh. What the Manzel said. And for your boat. And the things of your boat. For these two I have known. Huh? You talk in puzzles, Miss Bibi. I don't... The merchandise of your boat. Bibi. Oui? A poet of your country said merchandise to us. We gave him a buck. It's a tired subject that isn't worth a nickel more. We have sold it into the other. We haven't sold a thing. We gave him a dollar. And I don't mind telling you, the budget we've got worked out for this trip is... Then it is a matter of more money. Could be. More money for what, baby? A glass. A bargain of... Pocket. We're not haggling, lady. All we got on our boat is a few supplies. Some canned fruit juices and tins of dried beef. You want them? The matter of more money for the merchandise you brought from Miami. We will pay it. And there will be no delay. Baby, we started out real good together and suddenly you... Uh... Josh, how do you tell a beautiful girl she's lousing everything? Well, in the they... room at the end of the passageway upstairs. It is where I shall be. With them all, my lady. In ten minutes. Be there. At last. She moved away from us, and she moved like some uncalling phrase of primitive melody. It took her maybe a half minute to cross the floor and vanish behind a glass bead curtain that made small songs as she moved through it. That left maybe nine and a half minutes to toast the many things about Bibi that were worth drinking to. And then all that was left was to find out what it was all about. Room at the end of the passageway upstairs, she said. Uh Uh-huh. You know what I think? No, I don't. I think she's got us confused with somebody else. A couple of entirely different fellows. I said I... I heard you. It's funny you got to admit. Uh-huh. Funny. First a native poet, big song and dance about some merchandise we haven't got. Then this Bibi. What merchandise we're supposed to have, right? Right. Yeah. That noise. It's already happened to us once today. Yeah, but now it's inside. Hey, I came from down there. That's where she... Come on. It's locked, Rye. Baby! Open it! Open! All right, you and me, kid. Yeah. 
worth looking at. Thin lines of blood crisscrossed Dee's face and throat like some abstract design in horror. The new twist on death in the afternoon. Young lady, beautiful young lady, slashed to death by the spurs of a gamecock. The bird jumped to the windowsill and crowed to death once more. And across the now day, a pretty pink and blue sign smiled, Welcome to Haiti. One thing about being in the haberdashery business in New Kensington, Pennsylvania, is that you've got the world ahead of you. Keep in mind that anything is possible when you finally get to Haiti and come across a beautiful woman slashed to death by a fighting bird bred to kill. Accept it and then run. Like Josh and I did, three blocks until a sign said Hotel of Seven Sisters, fans in every room. We paid for one night in advance. The sign wasn't kidding. There was a fan. This one you grasped in the hand, waved back and forth under the chin, creating refreshment and letting the sound of the island drift in through the open window. Right. Huh? We shouldn't have run away. We're strangers in a strange country, baby. Who knows what we're supposed to do? Anybody who dies is a concern of... I'll get it. You meet me. Hey, Josh. Look who, the poet. Come in, come in. How'd you find us? I inquired of two Americans running in the noonday heat. Well, why are you looking for us? An explanation of the events at the Café de Pavillon de Teluna. The killing of the girl, Bibi, was a mistake. She, uh, uh, permit me, what is the hour? Uh, uh, almost 2.30. A good, good. An excellent time. For a punctual compatriot of mine will arrive in a moment and deal with the consummate... You're doing it again, Rene. You're talking riddles. Uh, oh, forgive me. Like so. The merchandise you have brought, those of us across the water there, the small way across the water, we wait for the guns, so... Guns? The final way to purchase human dignity. Born! Huh? Get the picture? This guy's a revolutionary. Hey, you're a real revolutionary, aren't you? You think we've got guns for a revolution or something? You know what they're going to say in New Kensington? They're going to... Josh. Renee, what about the girl? Why did that beautiful girl have to die like that? Ah. Uh... Bibi, unfortunate. Like so. She was killed because... Oh, permit me, the compatriot whom we are expecting. Well, tell him it's like so. Somebody's got our boat mixed up with somebody else's, huh? Hello, Renee. Uh, uh. Renee. He's dead. My intention. Quickly. Quickly now, come. Now listen here. Or you will lie down beside this man. Also dead. Quickly. Where are we going? Quickly, quickly. I asked you. Pistol barrels lacerate so. Now, quickly. The front sight of his gun had cut my cheek, and there was nothing to do but put my hand to it. He prodded us outside. The man in goatee, U.S. Army surplus, and German Luger into a waiting cab. Unhappy driver looked at my cheek and then at the upholstery and then shrugged about the whole thing. He better take us somewhere where he can get his cheek attended to, said my friend Josh. Sure, 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 sure. It was the stir my friend Josh created. In a while, the bleeding stopped. We got out in a part of Haiti where it was no longer Port-au-Prince, where it became the apron of jungle around the city. A mansion of columns and glazed brick and flamingos looking coy behind royal palms. A butler in knee breeches told us we were late, that everybody was in the auditorium. A private theater, gentlemen, that you may watch if you wish. I'll uh, tell Etienne you're here. Etienne? Well, who's he? Uh, you try to make a break from here, you'd be shot down before... What kind of a name is that, Etienne? In there. Golly. Voodoo. Native dantation type. Boy. Frankly, gentlemen, I... 
wouldn't be that impressed, huh? as you appear to be, I mean. They're all of them professional dancers, $20 each for the performance. So are you. Your host. Etienne? Yes. It is Betty. And you're the man who can tell us. About the BB, about Rene. You. It's about guns. It's all a mistake. I know, I know. Somebody got our boat mixed up with me. I know, I know. In here. Now. Uh, what's the matter? Why are you looking so unhappy about it? How to tell you what I must. We'd be crazy if we tried to run, wouldn't we? Oh, yes. You'd be shut down. Like the poet was. With no sadness. You are innocent, you see. Rene was not. Oh. An enemy, as also was the girl. They have their cars, we have ours. And both of you after the gun. We have them. They came on another boat, not you. What am I supposed to say? Use them in good health? It's just that nothing like this is... Well, we don't know what... You don't realize what's happening to you now, do you? A little bit. The sliced cheek I have. Yes, yes, that's an indication. The reason, of course, I haven't offered you a physician or even iodine should be coming apparent now. Correct me. Josh and I know there's a thing about guns. About a revolution coming up close by. Also, about two murders. And you can't let us go. <sighs> I don't mind telling you. I am a patriot. Murder is necessary, it seems. It goes with the word. We will have to take you far away. And you must be lost forever. Please try to understand. said with grave concern. And the door opened and some men walked in. The man who had picked us up at the hotel and two others, also looking grave, also looking concerned. Tight-fitting dark suits, so tight you could almost tell the caliber of guns the boat just made. We went then on a boat ride, a boat called Bumba. Look, look there, the Citadel. Floating on a sea of tropic moon, the Citadel of Henri Christophe. Ever since I was a kid, Ryan. Ever since you were a kid. You admire our citadel? Listen, Etienne. Of course. The citadel is practically all we came to see in Haiti. We're getting a fine view now. Really, all of it we want. So? So why don't you say the word to turn this boat around? There and... is a saying, the dead are silent. Now, look. And yours will be privileged. You will die a hero's death in the cause of human dignity. Human dignity. The poet used the same word. On opposite sides, and both of you using the same slogan. Uh, regretful. Romulu, Joano, Parisi. The both of you now onto the ground. And this is where. Quickly, quickly. Move quickly. Friend, if you didn't have that gun, I have it. Straight ahead. One thing I'd want before this is over. A tour through the Citadel. Yeah. Josh. Uh-huh. We can't just let them shoot us down and leave us here to rot in a sinkhole like this. You think we ought to make a break for it? I would say so. Listen, just before we hit that clearing up ahead. You there. You too. If you are discussing running away, you will be shot like pigs. Right. Mm. I still think we ought to try. Uh-huh. Like now? Like... The man who stood ankles deep in the stinking waters was the man we had seen before, Pepe. A man in a bar called the Pavilion of the Small Moon. A man who had taken us to BB. You do recognize me, I can tell. A bandolier of bullets over his shoulder, the snout of his submachine gun sniffing a circle at our belt buckle. At Chen, the others who had brought us here face deep in the mud. The brown marsh water washing their blood away slow. Very slow. Eventually, I knew they had to come here, where the guns are cached. See, those cases. The guns, the cause of everything. Oh, are we glad to see you. Truly? I don't like the way you said that. What do you have in mind? These, these whom I have slain, they were going to kill you, correct? They said it wasn't because we'd been nice to Bibi and the poet, but because... You were nice to them? Well, sure. My heart is filled with kindness for you both, for they were my friends. I asked you something. What would you have in mind? Surely you know. You must die. 
Word must not leak out of what happened here. This of the gang, this of the killings. Right? Yeah. Now listen, you. Oui? A favor. Huh? My friend here, all he wants to do is take a look at the Citadel. He may. There it is. Look. Uh, my friend here, he wants to take a look up close. This was his dream trip, the Citadel of Henri Christophe, his dream place. I see. No way. Crazy monument built by a crazy king. You see all those cannons pushed through those embrasures? At these steps. You see all those cannons, Ron? What about them? Not one ever fired. You know what else? What else, Josh? This was built on an exact line with the Great Pyramid of Egypt and the Great Pyramid built by the Mayas of Central America. That way. Enough. Look down. Christophe used to force his slaves to jump from this spot. He enjoyed their screams. Will you scream? I don't think so. Good. Please do not believe I am vile, messieurs. You were unlucky enough to stumble on a small wall. Neither side can afford your staying alive. Pity. Some pity. Now, alive or dead from a bullet. Jump. Now, hold it a second. One more word with my friend. Josh. What do you want? All of it. Your fault. Mine? Leaving the business, the boat, Haiti, all of it. How can you talk like that? In a citadel. What is it? Brick and moss. Hope you get a nice view of the East Wing on the way down. You know what you are? What? A child, a bird brain of a child. You're not going to talk to a me like that. A real square stud kicking knucklehead. Why, you miserable... <laughs> you got to do better than that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mary Cat, five before you die. Throw the baby right against the yard. Hey, what's up, dear? Why, grab him, yeah? Yeah. Fry? Fry? Yeah, I'm okay. You? Okay. What about him? We'll tie him up, leave him, I don't know, something. Fry? What? You see that over there? See what over there? That slab. Well, what about it? That's Henri Christophe's tomb. He was buried there. Right when he was killed. Right over there. Something, isn't it? Really something. Boy. Escape has brought you Night of the Guns, a story written and directed by David Friedkin and Morton Fine. Featured in the cast were Herb Ellis, Byron Kane, Jack Crucian, and Jay Novello. Also heard were Lillian Bayef, Chep Mencken, John Daner, and Paula Pascal. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are adrift in a native canoe somewhere up the Solomon Islands. Ahead of you lie the unknown terrors of native savagery. And closing in on you is a white man whose gunboat will smash you to the bottom of the sea. So listen next week when Escape brings you John Russell's story, The Price of the Head. (laughs) 